Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to find out how our tasks are assessed and how they are graded and what do we need to acquire in order to pass ADC practical exam. Now, we have already discussed what competencies are and how uh, ADC has made sure that we are being tested in every competency. And if you see here, these can be also synonymized or can be named as clusters so the competencies can be named as clusters which means groups and across from that the name of the cluster you see the number of stations that will be provided to you which is equal to the number of tasks that you will be given in that part of the competency in in that cluster now to pass this exam you have to pass all clusters but that does not mean that you have to pass all tasks. So group wise, you need to have that passing grade uh, in each and every competency or cluster. It's, I will leave it up to you how you want to call it, whether you want it to call as competency or cluster. The bottom line is that you need to have that competent skill in order to pass this exam. So we have in the clusters on the clinical skills day, five of those, including clinical information gathering, diagnosis and management planning, uh, treatment and evaluation, communication and infection control. And number of stations have been given over here as that part of the cluster will be assessed through those many stations. And if you can look over here, communication and infection control can be tested across multiple stations since you will be uh, evo involved in technical skills day task and there are six tasks on the technical skills day so you can be assessed on multiple stations all of those six stations for infection control and communication can be assessed through various stations as you will be participating in clinical information gathering management planning and clinical treatment and evaluation now i have already addressed that all these skills whichever are relevant to each other have been grouped and that's why they are called as clusters and you need to pass all seven clusters in one attempt in order to pass the practical examination and as i said before you can pass individual tasks ensuring that you do not fail the whole clusters now in order to pass a particular task or particular skill a checklist has been given to evaluators and that checklist would contain all the elements that you need to pass in the task for example uh, cusp height uh, appropriate line angle or presence or absence of voids in a restoration all that kind of stuff and and we will discuss that later but for now for the relevancy of this information i would say that all clusters need to be successfully passed now going forward how do you know that you can pass a cluster now for an example here Think of cluster A. It could be your restorative task. It could be your preparation task. Now, if there are three tasks in the cluster, right? And if you have scored well in all of all three of them, even though you haven't passed a majority of it, you can still pass. The bottom line is that you achieve the appropriate score. Now in the task one, let's assume that the passing score is 25. Again, this passing score is determined on the type of elements of that particular task, as I said before, and uh, every element has that score assigned to it. And this evaluators know about it and they will assign that score to your task. So for example, task passing score is 25 and you achieve an incredibly high score of 36. While rest of the other two tasks, you failed because you scored a little less than what is needed. Now, ADC practical gives us the credit 
for being so close to being passed, even though you fail those tasks, but since you are so close to being passed and you have achieved a good score in one task, your overall cluster result or the cluster score is over what is needed. So if the cluster passing score is 84 and you were able to make it bare minimum to pass, for example, in this case, 89, you pass the whole cluster and that is what it is needed to pass the cluster. Let's take another example here. In this cluster, if you see that you pass majority of the tasks, you pass two of the tasks and another one uh, you fail. Now the two tasks that you pass, you were able to pass it by bare minimum. You scored two or three points more than what it is needed. But the third task, you failed badly. Or I would say anybody who appeared for this task failed badly in one of the tasks while the other two tasks were able to manage barely to pass. So the overall cluster result is affected and the score is quite close to being passed but it is less than what it is needed. So as a result, we fail this cluster. And once we fail the one single cluster, means that we have to reappear for ADC practical exam. So keep that in mind. Passing a skill or passing one task does not say that you are going to fail the whole exam. If you fail a cluster, that's when the problem arises. That's when you need to appear for this exam again but now you have an understanding how these clusters are designed or how these groups are designed ensure that you pay attention to this fact that you are scoring well enough to pass these clusters and pass the adc practical exam